as well as applying audio effects, and in fact one of those audio effects includes a pan, pod and balance effect. If I just drag this on, look at the settings, I can adjust the left and right balance for an individual clip. I can also specify left and right balance by expanding an audio track, clicking on the volume pan control, and then making adjustments to the, here we go, the pan rubber band. It's kind of difficult to see against the waveform there, but if I make this track a little bit taller and resize the window a little bit, you should be able to see pretty clearly here's my pan adjustment left and right. There's also a project-wide control because what I'm looking at here is a pan adjustment in the context of my 1A audio track, which is a stereo audio track outputting to my left and right speakers, which may not be what I want to happen. So if I go to my settings and go to project settings, in here I can change my current setting. And over at the bottom right, I've got my track types, which are the default track types created when I make a new sequence, and my channel map. Now this channel map control defines the way that audio channels play out for each new sequence that I create. And I can change this on a sequence by sequence basis as well. If I click this button, I'll just resize this a bit so it's a bit clearer. I can decide what happens with each of the tracks that I have in a new sequence. If I just move this over, you can see that my new sequences are due to have one VA track which has audio and four audio tracks which have audio. And here I can see my system has just two channels, channel one, channel two, that's pretty standard. If I had a system with perhaps eight lines out using a dedicated piece of audio hardware or a piece of Grass Valley hardware, then I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across the screen. If I take, for example, my 1A audio track, I can leave this as stereo, or I can click and have mono for channel one or mono for channel two. And I can apply this to every track on my timeline. So for example, I can say audio one is going to be for channel one, audio two is going to be for channel two, and I can do this right the way down the list. At the moment, of course, I'm just working with four tracks. And this makes it very much more like uh, some of the other editing systems on the market where you'd be used to having left, right, left, right, left, right down the timeline. This it becomes the default setting for every new sequence created. If I just set that back to stereo or just cancel out, cancel back out, go back to my settings, and choose sequence settings. I get very little in the way of settings here. I can specify a name, I can specify the start point for the time code, and I can specify a total length if I want, but it doesn't actually limit the length, it just gives you a highlight on the timeline. If I go to my channel map now, I get the same control, but again, this control is specific to the sequence I'm working on. So that's channel mapping, which defines the normal way that these tracks will output, but you can also do individual clip-based pan controls by turning on the pan rubber banding for that clip on the timeline.